It's been 133 days since Harvey Weinstein was outed as a serial abuser and harasser of women. Nearly every day since, more men in more professions have been accused of, admitted to, or denied shocking acts of aggression, exploitation, and prejudice towards women in the workplace. No company is immune, including Vice. As the numbers climb and shock turns to anger, people are doing what they always do to make sense of things, talking. To capture the kind of conversations happening in America's workplaces, we gathered lawyers, actors, technologists, construction workers, and those in the restaurant industry, and asked them about the new reality of Me Too, women, men, and work. I was honestly kind of surprised that there weren't more men that were being accused in the restaurant industry. The industry itself is just that camaraderie, the lines get really blurry and there's like fun banter, but then some people don't know where the boundaries are and I mean, we've all been around it. There's just a certain kind of like ass slapping kind of attitude that goes on that I'm sure all of us have dealt with in some way where it's just like, okay, I'm gonna take my lumps and keep going because I just don't have time to deal with this. Working in tech companies, it's not uncommon to have couches everywhere or private rooms to watch movies in. We had massage rooms at Dropbox. We used to have closed off booths where you could make phone calls, but we had to get rid of them because we found too much, too much was happening inside of there between people who were dating each other. Our job sites are constantly changing, so basically you can be on the job with 20 women one day, and then the next two months you can be on, on the job with no women. You know, it just varies. The job that we're doing right now is 25 floors, and amongst maybe there's about a thousand employees total, probably about a hundred women, so I can't go to any floor without seeing them. The system of auditioning, because it's inherently usually all men producers, a man director, a man director, a man casting director, you're like a young girl going alone into a room of 15 men, that essentially your job is, I'm gonna convince you why you should hire me. You have finally like met that person who can change it all for you and like he'll disrespect you in that way. And it's sad that this is the world we're living in where things have to happen like that for you to just even progress in the field that you want to be successful in and how it comes down to, you know, men sexualizing you and using that. It's you and the job that you want. Yeah. And that job's going to change your life. My clerkship experience was one of the best professional uh, experiences of my life. You work a lot of hours in many clerkships. You get plugged into your judge's professional network. Uh, you get a mentor often for life. When you read, you read as your judge. And when you write, you write as your judge. You just basically become your boss for a year. I mean, I think that can be great, but it can also be problematic when your job is to totally assume somebody else's personality and worldview. But I think it gets into the just bigger problem of just the huge power differential between these life-tenured, uh, prominent, powerful federal judges and these 20-something law students who often have crushing debt loads and need this clerkship to get their foot into the door of the legal profession. There's, if a judge asks you to jump, you say, how high? So when I was a clerk for Judge Kaczynski, um, fairly early on in the clerkship, he called me into his chambers and he showed me an image on his computer of a naked man. And it was just so startling. Like there was just no context for it, no lead up or warning. And I think just because I did view him as this mentor, it was so shocking that I just sort of numbly walked out of his office. He was very controlling. He was very diminishing towards women. He spoke about women who are incredibly accomplished in some of the most degrading terms or just with absolute contempt. While I can never say that my clerkship was a good experience, I also just want to be really frank and say it also wasn't nearly, nearly as terrible as I think other women have experienced. My first job, I was a server at a chain restaurant with an all-you-can-eat buffet, so it wasn't like super nice, but there's like, the waitresses had to make the desserts, right? And the cooks were behind us. And so we would have to dip into the freezer to scoop out the ice cream. And every time I did that, the cooks would shout at me whether, and ask me whether I liked anal sex. And I was 16. And I was like, I don't like this. It must be something wrong with me. Like, why, why isn't this, why doesn't this feel good? Like, everyone else seems to be rolling with it. Like, have you guys had experiences like that? 
Like, what is it? Like, tell me, give me. How give long me. do we have? Yeah. <laughs> it certainly is more prevalent in places that are less professional, so fast casual or whatever. And, but like, for instance, there was one time where a guest had um, hugged me from the side and, and cut my breast and, like, ch like, jiggled my breast. And I was 19 and I was very upset about it. I, I, I had a lot of, like, body image issues and felt very violated, I mean, I, I guess anybody would, and I, I ran off crying, and he was offended, and the manager intervened and comped his tech check, and then I was chastised about, you know, being disrespectful <laughs> to, our, to our guest. Um, so that was the first time that I felt really powerless um, as a woman in the, in the restaurant industry. I, I felt like um, this was my place, you know, and I, I needed to either roll with the punches or, or find another avenue. Somebody I worked with inappropriately touched somebody else that I worked with who was a minor. Oh. I reported it privately to yes. our showrunner after the set had wrapped. I found it very disturbing. Mm -hmm. The person who was the person who was touched was obviously disturbed. I talked to the showrunner after set and I said, I do not want my name attached to this because I know how that'll go for me. Diva doesn't want to work with anyone, blah, blah, blah. Like you just no. know how it goes for you. The next day, nobody talked to me and said oh. that I was trying to ruin this person's career. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that happened. There's also that stereotype on set that females, if they stand up for themselves on set, that they're bitches, that they're divas. If a male stood up yeah. for himself on set, fact, he would just be known as a leading man. And that needs to change. On the job site we have right now, you know, it's, I've seen some stuff that would probably touch my soul if I was a woman, you know. They, they choose to draw pictures on the wall of the woman and not so flattering pictures at that. Uh, like women you're working with, those women, they draw pictures of those women? Yeah, on this job in particular, yes. Pictures of them uh, with words and sentences that's not so flattering, you know? Like what kind of words and sentences? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, in particular, it's one lady that would not, I won't name her, but they have a picture of her, you know, basically saying the stuff they want to do to her on the wall you know, for everybody to see. And that's, if it was me, it would, it would, you know, piss me off, it would, you know. Has she seen it? Uh, I'm pretty sure, because it's, it's on multiple floors. So the same woman. <laughs> Damn. I work with office ladies, and I work with the ladies that we have on the field, so there's actually a difference between them, you know. Ladies you see on the field, they have harder skin, you can say, you know, they, they can take jokes. They can, it's, it's a different way they approach things. They see the, the drawing, and it's, it's just a drawing, you know versus you, somebody here from the office sees that it's gonna hit human resources and it's gonna, it's gonna explode real quick. I, I just saw it the other day. Um, it was just a conversation I was walking by and uh, the guy said something, I forget what, and she all of a sudden, I mean, you could tell she has thick skin because she said, hey, uh-uh. It was like she wasn't gonna put up with it, you know? And I guess uh, they developed that. Talking about women and women in the workplace, do you feel like maybe they should be more like those women in the field you're talking about? They need to be tougher. I think as women, we fall into this kind of gray area where we go along with it and we're gonna have a filthy mouth too. We're gonna be the filthiest sailor on the ship just to show the boys that we can we can hang and we can work really hard. I think that's why so many women and and in this industry have felt for years that they couldn't say anything, is because you've gotta suck it up. Not only do I feel like I have to work ten times harder just being a female, I now have to work ten times harder. Uh, because I'm a black female. In some cases, I'm, um, I'm just as good or better than who I'm going up against, um, but I'm not recognized because of one female, two black. Having been a male in the kitchen and then transitioning, I mean, I've definitely seen a lot of pretty harsh sexual harassment uh, from the kitchen, especially towards uh, the women in the front of house. A new girl who might be 16 years old walks in to get a hostess job and all the guys in the kitchen are scrambling their door to look out the people and go, I have dips, I saw her first, Ugh. she's mine, no one can touch her. Gross. And it's this total like power, you know, ownership. For me, it was, really shocking after I transitioned and I tried to open up to some of the other girls at the restaurant and they're like, well, that's just part of what we deal with. Welcome to being a woman. Before an event that was a panel I was on with Judge Kaczynski over the course of the dinner, he made a handful of inappropriate remarks, some of which were kind of directed at me and how I or others should be happy to know that his dick still worked and was pinching me and attempting to feed me over the course of the dinner. 
And I want to be clear that like what happened at this dinner was not some sort of monumental event that I, you know, sat at just trembling and was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this panel? Like it was annoying as crap and it was troubling because I was just like, what is happening? Is this really happening? Is, is everyone aware that this is happening? Is this okay? Is everyone around me thinking that like, the, the judge is like looking at the, me this way and thinking of me as like maybe some sort of weird like sexualized object and then just like putting that out of my head and thinking okay like I, I don't want to be thought of that way I do not want to be thought of that way I need to like do better at this panel tomorrow to like convince everyone that I am a professional that I am a serious person and that I have serious views and that's why I'm here not because I am some sort of ornamental like cute thing to be kind of like fed and played with and so it's not like this oh you know this was this like really difficult event it's just this kind of like un unwelcome annoying noise the fact that you're trying to say it wasn't that bad what he did and then I just had to double down the next day and perform better on the panel so that it would be clear that I was smart actually kind of makes me furious because that really is a harm is, is it like grabbing someone no but is it, does it diminish and demean you and make you feel that maybe you don't belong here and now you're keeping a secret and I, that's just, it is a harm. Yeah, and that's certainly right. It's just, I am somewhat oversensitive to some of the, you know, pushback or criticism to Me Too, you know, some of which is directed at me, some of which is directed at the movement generally, which is, you know, you came out fine. Like, look at your career, like you did fine. Like, why are you kind of complaining? Are you guys talking to the guys your age about this stuff? It's been weird to talk with other young actors about it because they're like, oh, I was just so shocked but it is sort of interesting when I've talked to other male actors who are my age about how shocked they are. And I'm like, wow. Is that it's just, frustrating? It's just like, it's a different world. They grow up in a different world. Right. What I've seen men doing right now is in the workplace, I feel like people are being like overly careful. So one guy who works in venture capital told me that he won't speak to his secretary about anything other than work. He won't even say, how was your weekend? or young startups are saying like, we have three guys and it's too risky to hire a woman until we have to. So I feel like what I'm observing right now is people who are afraid of mob mentality and vigilante justice and they're just overcompensating by being super cautious in every way. And I'm worried about the impact of that on opportunities and mentorship for women. I've been fairly quiet on this issue, partly because I've kind of thought, last thing we need is more men talking. We've kind of, you know, and I'm a gay guy of color, but I was just like, you know, we've had our piece, we've been talking for centuries, so why don't we just, you know, STFU and kind of let this play out. I honestly wish I could say that I had your sort of more noble motives for like not saying that much about this. Mine are a little more cowardly, uh, which is like, I feel like I say the wrong stuff a lot of the time and it's, painful to then experience negative reactions to stuff. A lot of my male buddies, you know, when having these conversations, have expressed sincere remorse that they they feel they don't have a voice. And they feel as if, um, you know, n now they're all the bad guy, and to even express an opinion, they'll be shot down. And it's just, you know, it's, it's they're not wrong either. We can't do this without them, um, but they need to also start correcting you know, themselves amongst each other. Some of them don't even recognize it as harassment. To me, at this moment, the things that are being said in public about calling out misconduct are the closest in one-to-one -one alignment to the private conversations I have with my female colleagues and friends. Like, it's never been this aligned. The truth of what we're hearing in public and the truth of what women feel they've been experiencing for so long and not able to say publicly. I'm just curious, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, so I mean, can here you we just are. share with us, <laughs> it's without, the spot. without violating confidentiality, I mean, can you just give us an example of a two to three man conversation about this? Because I honestly, I don't know. I would say I've had some version of the following conversation 25 times. You know, we'd be sitting around, you're sort of talking, and close friend, and he will describe an event in college or high school or something where he's like, I'm, like, as I reflect on that event, I am keenly aware that that was, like, there are varying degrees of this, but like, I can see this very clearly now. Like, that is not okay. And it really is a conversation along the lines of simply the, sh the, the shallowest version is like, do you think something bad is gonna happen to me? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think the female analog of that conversation is, so this happened to me and I never told anyone and I don't know, but now I feel really hinky about it. So it just seems to me that it would be awfully useful to like, you know, integrate those <laughs> into something more than just everybody being afraid of being sued. I think the biggest thing that people want to see is repercussions for the people taking these actions. Um, and we're starting to see that, which is great, but there's still a lot of people who are getting like slaps on the wrist, six month paid leave of absence, come back and do whatever they want. Between Harvey Weinstein, who we know of, well, the accusation, I have to <laughs> caveat it, raped people. Yes. And Aziz Ansari, who is accused of being rather clumsy on a date, it seems to me. Yeah, and I mean... It, but you think those are materially the same? I think they're materially the same because at the end of the day, they're going to continue. You know, when I think about it, Aziz, he's one of the first, like, brown men who's been implicated in one of these uh, sexual harassment scandals that's come out. But when you think about it, like, when you get into talking about race, then, like, black men are accused of rape all the time. And nobody thinks, like, oh, we were being a little hard on them. Like, it's just how it is. And, like, black people walking down the street, like, fear for their lives all the time, even though they're just, like, walking or driving, like they can always be criminalized. Men in everyday life are starting to think, oh gosh, like I might be in danger if I like so much as like say, hey, and like put my hand on like a woman's shoulder or something. But it's just like, I don't know. I think we've babied you for a little bit too yeah. long because all we're asking is for you to have some decency and some respect and like don't touch things that don't belong to you. I think to us as guys, we know where the, the boundary line is at, you know, uh, and, and the women, they actually set that line depending on who you're talking to. You know, there's some women that they, they're very clear about, hey, this is as far as you're gonna go. And there's some that will joke around with you more. And there's some jokes that you're like, in your mind, you're like, should I be really saying that? But she makes it seem like it's cool. So sometimes those boundaries get, get pushed a little further than what they are, you know? You think guys who push those boundaries should get fired? Yeah, some of these guys, are, you know, like I said, it all depends, because you know, if, if the girl is okay with it, you know, and, she's actually allowing it to happen, then she's playing along with the situation. So it's not something for you to get fired with, because you're playing with it, you know. But then again, she shows up one day not in the mood to play, and that boundary was already crossed, crossed and, you know. Yeah, the guy got fired. And right? then now the guy gets yeah. fired. Crossing you know? in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many things that I've caught myself on a set now, like, shit, I should not be thinking about, is it okay if I like do this or if I get my mic pack on? It's like, I always, you just ingrain all of these things yeah. so deeply in your head that that was not directed towards you. That was just a <laughs> yeah, thing you in were, general. Very, he turned his back on you. You're awesome. You're awesome. That, that was not, that was just, I like eight years old shouldn't be getting a thigh pack on by a man alone in a room. Yep. Shouldn't. Our father, like once again, he, he like reminded us, he was like, that. this is why I'm always with you guys, like when we're in studios, because I know what goes down and like, I just want you all to be protected. He always made that very clear to us. You know, we want to talk about this as a sex problem over and over again, because it makes for good TV. It's a power problem. As long as there is a power disparity that is out of all proportion, this doesn't go away. The judge, by retiring, he effectively stopped the inquiry into his alleged misconduct. I think inquiries and investigations matter because are you gonna create a process that creates an accounting and accountability? And if we're gonna bring them back, as I think is probably inevitable for a huge percentage of these transgressors, let's bring them back in a responsible, accountable way. I don't necessarily think like this moment is really approaching any kind of reckoning. Like if we think that a reckoning is a handful of white men losing their jobs, like, Wow, that is not what a be, reckoning looks to like. To be replaced by a younger handful. Exactly, yeah. to be replaced by a younger Great. group of white men. I have a lot of these conversations with my white friends who are like, you know, Black Lives Matter, and like, I want to be a good ally. I'm so nervous about maybe, is it okay if I say this? And I realize, oh, this is the first time you've thought about your whiteness. And this is the first time you've thought about your whiteness interacting with black people. It's very similar to how men are taking it right now and that they're having these conversations and like, oh, I'm just suddenly aware of my behavior around women. And like, some of them are just realizing that women are in the same room as them. At a certain point, people, women, if you want to say that, just get tired and they just got tired of giving in. At the end of the day, that's you're sexually advancing on a woman who doesn't want it, which why, you know, fuck yeah, me too. And just because it is the standard, like, normalized part of our culture, should it be? Like lots of shit was normal 40 years ago even, that now is completely appalling. 
change doesn't happen without pain or disruption. And guys like me are now waking up and going, oh, I can't just behave the way I want to without thinking. You have to be aware of how your behavior is making the other party feel. I think change is difficult, you know, everything that we're going through, but eventually everything's just gonna settle down because it's it's a whole new generation taking over, you know. Every you gotta understand that a lot of the generation that's here now, it's it's old school. And the new generation is changing that to where hey, this is not just men, but it's women and not just in construction but in everything we do. I'm just I'm looking like ahead and trying to stay positive about this because I feel like it will change. You know, I just feel like it's this mm -hmm. uh, moment where it's it's really hard. Yeah. But you know, it we'll get past that. Time's Nothing up. stays the same forever. Literally, time's up. <laughs>